Hello, I'm Carl Seibert. Thanks for joining me for this quick tip video. Can you append data to any field in Photomechanic? Well, yes, you can. Not directly. It takes a couple of steps. It's actually a three-step process. But yeah, we can do it. So let's take a look here and see how this is going to work. All right, if we look in our metadata template in Photomechanic, we can see that we have the ability to append and also to prefix, as well as to overwrite the caption. The description writers field, we can append to by ticking that little tick box there. And of course, the keywords field, we can append keywords, tick the tick box, and there you go. Now recently, I did a video on working with metadata in Adobe Bridge. And in Adobe Bridge, you can append your entire template. You can do the same thing in Adobe Photoshop, as a matter of fact, if you're working on a TIFF or a PSD. In a JPEG, not so much. Now, I frankly can't imagine why you would want to append everything in an entire template, but I can imagine appending to a field other than those three where Photomechanic gives us the built-in ability. So how to go about doing this? An idea of how to proceed probably occurred to you just like it did to me, but I went ahead and worked out the details for us. So let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at these pictures in this folder full of test images. And let's look at special instructions. If I can see a real use case where somebody might want to append something that's not in the caption or the keywords, it's probably going to be in special instructions. So we have three pictures here with silly embargoes in the special instructions. And here we have a picture and it says, publications wider than they are tall, out. Okay, out is a wire service thing. It just means an embargo. It means the picture is forbidden for certain outlets. And we move over to the next one, websites with purple backgrounds. Oh yeah, absolutely. We just re really don't want our pictures turning up there. And we go to another one and it's embargoed for release on or after 12.01 a.m. on the 7th Thursday in November. That could be a while. Let's say we want to append something else to our special instructions, another embargo or some useful restriction or something like that, in the same vein as these. Well, how are we going to do it? If all three of these pictures had the same special instructions, we wouldn't be here worrying about it because we just take whatever's in the special instructions, take it out, put in the new special instructions. If we're going to add an embargo, we just add a new embargo and then use the template and stamp it over all three in one go, no problem. Now, frankly, if we only have three pictures to worry about, we're just gonna use the copy and paste keys, same way, no problem. But let's just pretend that we have these three separate cases of what's in the special instructions scattered over 30 pictures or 130 pictures or 300 pictures, or maybe they're all unique, whatever. We just want to add one more to them. How can we go about doing this? Well, the answer is, at least the answer that I thought up, and if you come up with a better one, jump in the comments down below and tell us. I thought, well, let's just use variables and we'll copy the data around and we'll get it right. So I came up with a three-step process. It's actually a three and a half step process. And we'll talk through it and then I'll demonstrate the thing in sort of real time. First, Step 0 0.5 is back up your pictures. We're going to do scary stuff. We're going to move data around a slip of the fingers, and we could lose data. So work on copies. I know that's common advice, but it's good advice. If you're not working on a folder full of crash test dummy demo images like these, do it. All right, so presuming that we have done that, the first step is we're going to take the existing information that's in these special instructions, that's different for all of these pictures, and we've got to copy it someplace. And we'll use a variable to do that. So, all right, we'll cancel the regular IPTC editor. We will bring up the template editor, clear it. So we want to move what's in the special instructions or copy it to someplace else for safekeeping. So what we need to do is we need to find a field that we're not using that is big enough to hold whatever it is that we're moving. I arbitrarily decided a couple thousand characters. 
So in order to find such a field, the easiest way to go about it is to think about a field that accepts text entry that is written only in the XMP data block. Because in the XMP data block, there are no character limits on the fields. And right here where my cursor is, rights usage terms, is just such a field. This field only exists in the XMP, and it's got plenty of room, and it can hold whatever we're going to do. It's also highly likely that you're already using it. So we need to go and find some other field. So let's look here and find a field. What well, looks like what well, looks like a willing participant? Oh, this one is just dandy. Additional model info. All right, so we're going to go in additional model info. We're going to move whatever is in our special instructions field to this field, or I'm sorry, we're going to copy it. So let's open up our variables picker, and let's go here, and we will find the variable for special instructions. Instructions. Here it is. Double click it in the variables picker, and Photo Mechanic will insert it where my cursor is. Now, I happen to know that the variable for special instructions is the word instructions in curly brackets. Words in curly brackets in Photo Mechanic are variables. However, that said, I don't want to show you a bad habit and type it because, hey, you really just shouldn't type this sort of thing. So, okay, we've put the variable for the instructions field in the additional model info field. Let's make sure that we have selected all of these pictures. OK, fine. We've done that. We'll apply the template. Now, if we go back using the regular one at a time IPTC editor, the one that reads metadata, we can see that our silly embargoes are still here in the special instructions field. And if we scroll down here to the extended fields, to additional model info, we can see that our embargoes are down here. And if I move from image to image, we can see that the embargoes are unique for each picture. Now, additional model info doesn't look like a really big field, but don't let that fool you. We don't need to work with this information. We don't need for it to be readily readable. So one of these little one row fields in the photo mechanic interface will do just fine. It'll hold plenty of information there is no character limit to these fields. So don't worry about that. We can use these little one row fields. That's fine. So now we have in all of our pictures, our existing special instructions are sitting in the additional model info field. If we go back to our template, we clear the template editor again. Now we go back into special instructions and we'll put the variable for additional model info, which is model info. Double click, pop it in there. I'll add a semicolon, a couple of spaces, and we can type some sort of new embargo or restriction. And we'll say only uses that make Carl look very clever permitted. So you scoff at my sense of humor, but I've got to tell you, as a picture editor, a fair number of times I got pictures with restrictions that were just about like this. They didn't make them be about me, of course. But yeah, never underestimate the potential of human stupidity. Okay, fine. So now let's just apply this template to our three pictures. And we'll go back and we'll do the same thing. Now we'll look in special instructions. And we'll see here, publications that are wider than they are tall, out, and then make Carl look clever. Cool. Websites with purple, back, purple backgrounds. Okay, there's a typo in there, isn't there? All right, well, that's just me. Anyway, yes, definitely, no purple websites. And make Carl look clever. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And here we have the third one. Same thing. Embargoed to the seventh Thursday in November and make Carl look clever. All right, so that was step two. We still have all three pictures selected. We'll just pop back to the template editor and now we'll just tidy up. 
So we'll clear the template editor one more time. And then we will go find our additional model info field. Here it is. And we'll just turn it on with the field empty. And the result of that is the photo mechanic will blank this field. Apply it, and we're good to go. If we go back and look again, special instructions is filled out the way we want it to be with the information appended that we wanted to append. And if we zip down here into our seldom used IPTC info, and I've customized my interface. I actually have no idea where this field appears in your interface, but that's a photo mechanic thing. You can customize the interface to your taste. Here it is. Additional model info, and the field is nice and tidy and empty. Now, of course, if you were using the additional model info field, not that I feel that that's going to happen all that much, but if you were going to use it, you would have to find some other empty field to use for this purpose. Okay, so being the kind of guy I am, I went through and found about a dozen fields that'll work for us for our temporary storage place when we append. And I've listed them in the description down below, along with their photo mechanic variables. We have the rights usage terms field. If that just happens to be available, it's always very handy. Contact emails, contact phones, the contact URLs field, the contact city field, person shown, the featured organizational code field, featured organization name, model release ID, model ages, additional model info, the one we just used, and the property release ID field. I tested all these fields with 2,000 characters worth of Ipsum junk type, and yes, they work, even if they're only the one-line version of the field in the photo mechanic interface. It's not like we have to comfortably read this information. We're just storing it here for a minute. Okay, so let's go back and let's run through this at more or less kind of normal speed. So we'll cancel that. We have our three pictures already still selected. Open the template editor. We'll clear the template editor and we'll put whatever is in our special instructions field somewhere else. Let's use the same model info field that we used before. So here we want the variable for the special instructions field. That's instructions. And we'll just pop it in there. The template editor will automatically turn that field on for us. Okay, fine. That's cool. We'll go ahead and apply that to our three pictures. We'll open the template editor back up again. We will once again clear it. We'll go back to our special instructions field and let's find the model info variable. Here it is in the picker. We'll put the contents of the model info field in there. We'll put in a semicolon, a couple of spaces, and then we'll type in our new restriction. Only uses that make Carl look clever are permitted. Okay, fine. Wow, I want a whole sentence without a typo. I think that might be a record, folks. All right, so we will apply that. Now we'll go back one more time, and we will go back to our model info field, clear the template, turn the model info field on, leave it blank, and apply it. And there we are. And I haven't really been timing this, but well, whatever, 30 seconds or so, depending on how well or badly you type. Now we go back here. Here we have our original silly embargo, followed by our very silly restriction in this photo. We have the different silly embargo, followed by the silly restriction in this photo. And we have the same thing in this photo. So there we go. Yes, indeedy, you can append data to any field you want to in Photo Mechanic. You just use that little three and a half step process and you're good to go. And remember that I put those fields and their variables down in the description below. If you know a better way, or if there's a photo mechanic tip or trick that you'd like a video about, reach out in the comments down below, or on my blog, or use the contact link on my blog, or reach out on social media 
and just let me know, and I'll see what I can do. And by the way, folks, the like button on videos like these is an actual thing. If you click the like button, it'll help SEO, and the next guy who's looking for this video stands a better chance of having it come up in his search. So that would be a cool thing. Go ahead and do that if you've got a second. Until next time, please stay safe out there and mind your metadata.